Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this the next presentation is uh, from Jonas Oldman, who has a, a very deep and very background in the online poker market. And here we, today we're looking at uh, a deeper look at the US online poker landscape, regulated gray and social operators. Over to you, Jonas. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for a good afternoon. And thank you for uh, attending. Seems like uh, quite a few people have uh, moved on to the bar or something. But <laughs> thank you for being here. So today I'll talk about the, uh, the, the, the online poker market in the US uh, from, a, from an affiliate perspective. Uh, and I want to start with a little bit of a history lesson here. Uh, personally, I've been in the industry since, uh, since 2004. Uh, I worked for software providers to, uh, to regulated operators, to gray market operators. I've been in the, in the US and I've been in Asia and Europe. So, but and uh, and um, it's been. A, I'd like to start to talk about the period usually referred to as the poker boom, and uh, online poker before October 2006. Then we had the um, the first uh, online poker site in the world, which was Planet Poker, launched in the late 90s. Uh, as you can see, mo almost every poker site. Look, still looks like they, they did in the 90s. So they really, is, <laughs> it's an inspiration for the whole industry. And then we had Paradise Poker, who at one point had an 80% market share. And I remember everyone was saying that it's going to be impossible to ca catch up with them. But uh, then something happened. Chris Moneymaker uh, won the World Series Poker main event in two, 2003 after qualifying online on PokerStars. And Party Poker started investing heavily in, in TV marketing in the US. And that really created the poker boom. But then something happened in October 2006. And it's been a legal roller coaster ride since. So, first of all, the UEGA happened in 2006. And what, what, when, what was that? We, we, it was mentioned in the previous presentation as well. <clears throat> it was, um, some people refer to, like, after that, uh, online poker became illegal in the US. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not really the case. Uh, you ain't got targeted payment processors. And, um, and, and, and actually, online poker is regulated by state law. UEGA was a feder federal law. And uh, everything that was illegal in some states before UEGA was actually legal. UEGA didn't change anything, except for payment processors. But it had a big impact on the whole industry. And um, the payment processors, the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Neteller, they pulled out of the US market. All the listed uh, companies, like Party Gaming, they pulled out. So it was a big change. And a few stayed, and they, they like PokerStars, and that, that's what actually how PokerStars became the industry leader for us. And then a few years later, Black Friday happened in 2011. And what was that? That was basically uh, the state of New York targeting the big, three biggest online poker sites, PokerStars, Full Tilt, Absolute Poker, and seized their domains and forced them out of the market. But really, it wasn't any legal change or anything. Uh, offering online poker to players in, uh, for real money in New York had been illegal for many years. Many years. It was just that they acted on it. And that, of course, uh, since then, the online poker market in the US has been a lot smaller than it was before. It went, the, the, the peak for the online poker market was pre uega but it remained quite, pretty big until 2011, and since then, a lot of that market has disappeared. Then two years later, Nevada decided to uh, regulate online poker. Everyone was saying that, wow, this is the start of, uh, of the new poker boom. Uh, like, uh, so, uh, and then two other states followed the same year, uh, New Jersey and Delaware. Me, personally, I, th I thought, okay, now is the time to, I re relocated myself and my family to 
California, I set up a company, a software provider for the regulated US poker industry. And everyone was talking about California alone being a multi-billion dollar market. And that most states would follow. It would. But since then, and, and, and also that was probably the first really legal change on the state level uh, during this whole period. But since then, nothing has happened. Until later this year, of course, the, the Pennsylvania bill with the fourth state to regulate online poker. So this is what the map looks like today. You can play regulated online poker in three states. And the, the, the percentage numbers here represent the, the percentage of the US population. So today, 4% of the US population can play regulated online poker. Pennsylvania, later this year, will double that market. So close to 6%, 8 uh, 8% will be able to play regulated online poker. Which means that as an affiliate, if you have poker traffic in the, from the US, basically you cannot do anything with the 92%. You cannot, there's no, there are no regulator operators to send it to. So how has that affected the, uh, the interest in poker in the US? If you look here, this is when uh, Chris Moneymaker won the World Series Poker. And this is the poker boom, and it peaked it in 2006, when, when poker stars actually sent 20% of the field in the main event of the WSOP qualified online on poker stars. Quite amazing. What happens then? Then New Ega happened, and Black Friday. But as you can see, the interest in poker is still, is still very high. Players still play poker. We have close to 7,000 players paying $10,000 each to participate in the main event every year. So there's still a very, very big interest in, in poker. So what if you're, a, you're an affiliate and you have a traffic from the US, poker traffic? What are your options? Well, you have the regulated operators. They're in three states today, New Jersey, Nevada, and Delaware. The legal risk for you as an operator is, is, is lower, but you need a game and license. Uh, we talked about that earlier today. And the player value for those players uh, is high. Then you have the gray market operators, talking about America's card room, Ignition. And they're in almost all states they actually block a couple of states, typically the states where the regulated operators are. The legal risk for an, for an affiliate sending players to those uh, operators is high. We've seen that. And the player value is just as high as for the regulated operators. And then we have social gaming operators. I'm thinking about Zynga and then similar, and WSOP and similar. They're, they're in all states. The legal risk for you as an affiliate is low, but unfortunately the play value is also low. It's probably like 1% of the, uh, compared to the, uh, the others. But now, there's a new category here. It's global poker. So, which I'm, I'm the general manager of, of global poker. Uh, we're in all states, the legal risk is low, and the player value is high. So how does that work? So we all, we're, social, we're, we're a social online poker site, but we also operate a sweepstakes model. So what is, oh, this doesn't look great. But uh, this is, um, I don't know how familiar you are with sweepstakes. It's a very American thing. But it's basically, I can give you one example, is the McDonald's Monopoly card. It's um, basically you uh, have this Monopoly card, you go to McDonald's, you buy cheeseburgers, you will get a stamp. And when you have completed your Monopoly card, you uh, send it to McDonald's and you can win a million dollars. Or you can win a trip to, uh, to the Super Bowl, th things like that. 
and it's not considered a lottery or gambling or anything. It's completely legal. It's a sweepstake. Pepsi, a few years ago, organized a sweepstake where, where you could buy a Pepsi bottle and win a million, a billion dollars. And uh, that wasn't considered. That's not. That's a sweepstake, completely legal in all 50 states. And then a quite famous one as well is Reader's Digest. Their whole business model is around sweepstakes. It's not really about the magazines. So what we do... So these slides aren't looking great. I apologize for that. So basically... <clears throat> We offer, uh, we offer, as I said, we're a social, social online poker site. We offer our players uh, gold coins, playing gold coins, which is a virtual currency, which has no value outside of our system. You can, buy, you can buy avatars for it, but otherwise you just play for fun. When you run out of gold coins, you need to purchase new gold coins. But to promote these, uh, the gold coins, we also offer sweeps, sweepstakes. So, if you buy 10,000 gold coins, which cost $100, we will also give you 100 sweeps cash. You can play for those sweeps cash at separate tables. And if you win at those sweeps tables, you can actually cash out. And this model is, is, uh, is approved by uh, PayPal has reviewed it. And they, they agree it's legal. And uh, so in all 50 states, we offer PayPal. Uh, to our players for purchases and cash outs. Facebook has also proved it, so we, all, we do most of our marketing with, with Facebook. And uh, so, so the thing is that if you compare to what McDonald's is doing, so they sell cheeseburgers, but to, to promote the sale of cheeseburgers, they can have a sweepstake. For us, it's similar. Our main product is gold coins, and to promote the sale of gold coins, we, we offer sweeps cash. We, will have, we have many players who will play only for gold coins. We also have players who are actually not that interested in the gold coin tables. They will, they will purchase gold coins because they want to play for this, at the sweeps tables. But that is fine. Um, that doesn't change anything. It's very similar to if you want to, if, if you want to, if you want to be, win one, $1 billion from, uh, from, a pep, from buying a Pepsi bottle, you don't have to drink it. It's the same thing. And this is why we are modeled then. That's why we can have all those. We can, we're legal in all 50 states. We, uh, it's a low legal risk. And it's, uh, it, we can offer the same player value. We get the same player value as, uh, as the regulated and the gray market operators. And, um, and it, we're doing, we're doing well. We're probably the fastest growing poker site in the U.S. Uh, right now. And uh, that's, uh, that's actually everything I had to say. So thank you for listening. And I don't know if we have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Uh, do we have any, anybody, anybody from the audience who wants to put anything to Jonas at all? Okay. There we go. I have a gentleman in the back. Justina, can you run the... Thank you. What's the revenue? What is it making cost per click, CPM? You, you mean uh, what, what, what we offer affiliates in terms of uh, and how much? Uh, What's the value see? of sending traffic to this? Well, offer? That, there's, plenty, that there's plenty of traffic in the United States. Uh, there's plenty of other things you can offer people in the United States. Is it, is it above the bar of a basic sweepstakes offer or? I'd say we're we're on par with the uh, with the uh, regulated and the grey market op real money operators. Well, what about other sweepstakes? How does it compare? Like, what, what there, is it? There are no other there are no other sweepstakes uh, offering online poker. Yeah. Uh, without model. Non poker sweeps. That's that's my question. We deliver hundred thousand dollars worth of sweepstakes traffic in yeah. the United States a day, but the cost per click is somewhere between twenty and seventy cents, depending on the publisher. Yeah. Is this something we should look into? This is something you should look into, like, for sure. What is, the, what is the value of a click? What is the value of somebody getting to your website? We, we will discuss that with affiliates one-on-one, -on -one, so I cannot negotiate with it right now. But uh, 
if you if you compare with the what 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 you, with the CPA deal from a gray market or a real money operator, we'll be on uh, similar to that. Which is, and we usually don't pay per click, but per uh, per uh, paying customers. Okay. I think we this gentleman there. Justina, there's a gentleman here actually, just down the front here in the blue shirt. Thank you. Can you be more specific about how you're paying per paying customer? Because I've spoken to someone at your company before and they don't do revenue share. They wanted to do some sort of traffic buying thing, which I wasn't interested in. Um, how, how are you paying affiliates? We are, we are willing to offer CPA deals, but let's, uh, let's uh, talk, talk that one on one. And you're right, we don't do rev share deals. Okay, do you operate outside the US as well? Yeah. Do you operate outside the US market as well, outside the US? Sorry, I... I do you operate outside the US market? We operate, uh, well, well, our name is Global Poker, and uh, we do operate uh, outside the US, but uh, outside the US we only offer gold coin play. The sweeps, yeah. the sweeps tables are only available for US players. So right now, only U.S. players can make uh, c can make cash outs. Uh, we we plan to expand though, and we're looking at uh, Latin America and Asia. Okay. And you you're the only sweepstakes guys left in the in the U.S. Because what wasn't pure play based off? <laughs> Sorry, I, got, I have a difficult hearing you. Pure play. Yeah. Um, yes, we're the only sweepstakes operator in the market. I mean, do you find it difficult to explain the model, the business model to potential players? No. Um, it, well, it was it was a bit difficult for me as a as a European to understand the model uh, when I first uh, read about it. I joined the company six months ago, but uh, the whole sweet, the whole whole idea of sweepstake is 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 so common in the U.S. So uh, we haven't. I mean, our U.S. players understand it. Okay. And, uh, also, the size of the market as well. You did the, the calculation on, uh, you said that I think it's now the 8% of the US market, once Pennsylvania goes through, will be regulated. What's, what's, that, what's that calculation based on? Is that based on adult population size, or do you have some revenue projections in there? And how, how that, is that? That's based on the population size. So those, based on population those, size. those four states, including Pennsylvania, they represent the 8% of the US population. Okay, so do you see yourselves targeting the remaining market outside of that in a way? Um, I mean, is that, is that where the strength of the model is for the sweepstakes poker? Because, I mean, does, uh, obviously when it's regulated and become, real money becomes, poker becomes available, does that mean there's a drop-off for you? Um, is, is, your, is your business targeted in the states outside those four, so to speak? I think our, our um, of course, some, some players will play with us because they don't have any other options. So of course in the, in the other 46 states, if you want to play, uh, if you want to make PayPal payments and, and you don't want to play with the gray market operators, then we're you're the only option, that's right. But I also think we, 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 we also have players from those four states. Uh, they they might, might be interested in gold coin first and then, and then play the sweeps the tables. Okay, okay. So how, uh, what's, uh, what's, what's most important? You've got the coin tables and you've got the uh, sweepstake tables. And what's, uh, what's the split? What's, what's, what's most popular? What drives the most business for you? We have more players on the sweeps tables. So we probably roughly have, uh, probably have prof roughly have 20% uh, of our tables that gold coin play and 80% uh, sweeps play. Okay. okay. I'll just see if we've got any, uh, have we got any more questions from the audience, by the way? Uh, okay. I think we just, uh, Coming to the end of the uh, end of the slot now, actually. Um, if anybody, if you've got any more questions for Jonas, I'm sure that he'll be prepared to hang around. If it's something you'd rather ask face to face, which uh, I get the impression there's a couple of guys in the audience who would like to do that. So uh, I good. think we'll draw things to a close. Thank you very much, Jonas. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.